Do you want to control your smart devices from anywhere? Stay tuned. Hello people and welcome to another episode of Everyday Smart. Today we're going to be showing you how you can create a dashboard in Hobbitat so you can control your smart devices from anywhere by using your phone or by using a, a computer, any internet enabled device, basically you will be able to access this dashboard and control your devices. But before going into the tutorial, let's take a look at the different devices that we're gonna be using for this dashboard creation. So the first thing you need to use is the Hobbitat Elevation Hub. So this is the device that is gonna allow all the automations that we've been creating to be possible and also to allow for the dashboard to be possible so you can control your devices from anywhere. The other thing that you're gonna need is an internet enabled device. In this case, I'm gonna be using a phone with the Hobbitat app, but you can use a computer with the dashboard link or whatever you want to use. And then the last thing that you need, obviously, is the smart devices. So these are the devices that you're going to be controlling with your phone or with your computer from anywhere you are. So let's go back to Hobbitat. So we're going to be using Hobbitat Elevation for doing this. And the app that we're going to be using is called Dashboards. So make sure you have it installed already. Let's get started. So go to your Hobbitat Dashboard app. Click on it. Now click on create a new dashboard. Give it a name. It has dashboard by default, but you can change the name. In this case, I'm gonna call it ES Control, ES for Everyday Smart. Okay, then the second step that you need to do is to select your devices. So you can do two different things in here. You can enable the use all your devices or you can disable that and individually select your devices one by one. So in here, what I recommend doing is selecting the devices that you're gonna be using for this specific dashboard one by one. And the reason for this is that if you do that, use all your devices, for some reason, dashboard gets a little bit overloaded. So whenever you access that dashboard, it takes a little bit of more time to load. So if you want a faster response, you want to select your devices individually instead of selecting everything. So that's exactly what I'm gonna be doing now. So I have a couple of devices that I wanna show for example here. So I'm gonna start choosing my devices. Okay, so I'm done choosing my devices. If for some reason I forgot to select one, we can always go back and add it later. So whenever you're done, click update. And then you can also click on this advanced section and in here you can select what time you want for the cloud dashboard to refresh and for the local dashboard to refresh, I recommend leaving this as default. And then if you want to set a pin for whenever you open the dashboard, you can put that pin in here. In this case, I'm not going to do that. Same thing if in the dashboard, you're going to have the safety monitor piece of Hobbitat, 
you can also put a pin number for that so you can arm disarm the house using that pin only and same thing with changing modes in this case we're not going to set up any of the pins but you can do that and then whenever you are done modifying your dashboard then you can enable this last option so you lock down the dashboard and you don't allow any further modifications to it if later you decide to change it you can come back here and disable that so you can have access to the editing options again of the dashboard so for now this is all we need so let's click on done okay so now the basic dashboard is created now we need to customize the dashboard so we need to go to that dashboard we just created so we can click there where it says es control the one that we just created and we can go to this local lan link to dashboard it is important to go to the local one because that's the only one that allows for the customization you cannot customize while being on the cloud dashboard okay so you get this page whenever you create a new dashboard and you only get it once you can auto fill it with all the devices you have selected or you can manually add the different tiles. So in my case, I want to manually add the tiles. So click on manually add the tiles. And this is basically the workspace. So I wanna change this grid in here. So I'm not gonna add any tiles yet. I'm gonna hit S in here, and then I'm gonna go to this gear icon. And then in here, we have the grid options. So the first thing that I want is that I only want four columns. And this is my case. Again, you can customize your dashboard however you want. But in my case, I want four columns and later you're gonna see why. And then for rows, I want for now nine, but let's put 10 just in case. For the font size, I want 13. For the icon size, I want 30. For the gap between the tiles, I want three in my case. And you're gonna see later all of these settings. And for the roundness, I want five. Again, I'm gonna be showing this again later so you see what exactly these options are modifying. So far so good in this case. We're gonna come back to this later. But now I have the grid the way I want it. So now we can click here this plus sign to add new devices to this. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is to add the Asus and the Habitat Safety Monitor tile. That's not a device that you select. That's why I didn't select that device previously, but that is a template that we have readily available here. So if you come to this template section, you select HSM, that is already a tile that you can use. This is the grid. You can click wherever you want this tile to be placed at. So in my case, I want it here. So whenever I select different things, I don't know if you can notice in this column and row indicator, as I select different cells or different tile locations, that updates. So I want the HSM starting in this one. And I want this HSM tile to expand throughout four columns and I also want it to expand through two rows. So I can do that by going here and increasing the width to four and then increasing the height to two. And then now that I have selected this, when I click add tile, you can see that it added something there already. So we already have the HSM tile. Now the next thing that I wanna do is I like to have my tiles organized by room so I can know better what I'm trying to look for. So we also have a test tile, which is just that. It's just a tile for test purposes. You can type whatever you want. And in my case, I use it for organization purposes. So this is my test tile and I wanna give it a name. In my case, I'm gonna call this one Great Room. And the place where I want to add this one is right here. And I want for it to only take one cell basically. So I want to go back here and select just one for width and one for height. Then I click add tile and you can see that now that tile space is being used. 
Now I want to add some other devices. So the first device that I want to add is one of my lights. So the living room light. So I select that. Now that we're adding devices, we need to specify what type of device we're using and what specific type of tile we want to associate with that type of device. So in this case, this is a switch. So I want to look here for the template that is for switch. And then the place where I want this tile to appear is here. And then in this case, I want this tile to take only one row, but three columns. So I'm gonna increase the columns here again to three. And then I hit add tile. So now we can see that it got added there. Now the next device that I want to use is my living room fan. So living room fan, this is a different type of device. This is a fan control device. So let's look under the template section. Let's look for fan. Here we have fan. And then the same thing, I want it to put it here and for it to take three columns. So that's set up already, so add tile. And you can see that, that it took that place already. The other device that I want to add is my North living room window. This is a contact sensor. So this is the device. Now we have to search for that template for contact. So we come here, contact sensor. Same thing, I wanted three columns starting in this specific one. So click on that tile. It took that space already. Next device I want to add is my door lock. So click on door lock. And this is a different type of device. This is a lock device. So under the template, select lock. And then same thing, three columns starting from this one. Click add tile and it's taking that place already. Now this other device is my guys lamp. This is actually a color bulb. So I want to search for that specific template, which is color bulb. And as usual, click there, three columns, add tile, and that's it. Now the next device that I want to add is a motion sensor. So this garage motion sensor and as it is implied by the name, it's a motion sensor. So we want to look for motion sensor under the template section. So look for that and select motion. Same thing, add tile. And I actually want to add an additional tile and I ran out of rows already. So what we can do in here is that we can exit out of this editing window, go back to the gear icon and add another row. So we add another row, now we have an extra row, hit X. Now go back to add devices and I want to add a temperature sensor. So this garage motion sensor that I have in here, at the same time, that is a temperature sensor. So look for the temperature type under the templates Select it, click where you want to have it and hit on add tile. Well, in this case, it forgot the settings for three columns. So the way we can fix that is that we can exit out of this window. All of these tiles that we added, they all have these three kind of menu buttons. So if we go to the last menu button, we can see in here, that you can modify the aspects of that specific tile. So we can extend it through the three columns that in this case I want. So we just do that and then we close it and that's it. So now again, at the beginning, I mentioned that I want to keep things organized. So these first five devices, they are all in my great room. So I want to expand this great room test tile through five different rows. So I do that by doing this. Five, hit close. Now it is extending through the five. And then I want another test tile to cover these other two, which are in my garage room basically. So we can click on the plus sign to add more devices. 
And in this case, again, it's not a device, it's a tile from the template that we already have. So it is the test tile. So select test and I want to call this garage, with, which I already have in here. So garage and I want that to be added right there and to take two rows. Click a tile. There we have it. So this is the basic way that we can create a dashboard at the devices. And now all of the devices are controllable from here. So if I click this in here, it's gonna turn on my living room light. And then if I click it again, it's gonna turn it off. Now you can have multiple dashboards. This is a specific dashboard, but you can have, let's say you wanna make instead of a single dashboard for covering all of your rooms, maybe you want to make one dashboard for the great room only, and then one dashboard for the garage only, and then another dashboard for your master room. So you can do that again, and you can actually access different dashboards from a specific dashboard. So the way you do that is clicking on the plus sign and it's adding another template. So under the template, you want to select the dashboard link so you select that and then in here, you select which specific dashboard you want. This dashboard needs to be already created in order for you to be able to select it. So in this case, just for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna add the security devices dashboard. And I want it to start in this first cell in here and I want it to be two columns, two rows. I add the tile and again, just for demonstration purposes, I want to add another dashboard link to my battery dashboard. So I select battery, select the other place where I want to add it. It already remembers the two columns and two rows. Click add tile. And now we have it. So we can exit out of this window. Now you can see your dashboard populated. So now if I click on this security devices dashboard link, it's going to take me to that other dashboard. I'm not going to do that now, but it's going to take me there. Same thing with the battery. If I click the battery, it's going to take me to the battery dashboard that I already have created. So the other thing that I want to do is go back to the gear icon. Now, instead of modifying the grid, let's go to the options one. And then in here, I want to modify this column width and this row height. In my case, I want my dashboard to automatically resize the width depending on the device that I'm looking the dashboard from. So if I'm looking at this dashboard from my computer, I want the width to fill the entire width of the screen. And if I'm looking at dashboard through my phone, I want the width to automatically resize to the width of my phone screen. So the way we can do that is by leaving this column width empty. So if we do that, as you saw, the dashboard already resized to cover the entire width of the screen. Now for row height, the one that I specifically want is 80. Again, you can have whichever you want. As you saw, this basically made all the rows thinner. So now it's kind of more accessible. You can see everything easier now. As I mentioned at the beginning, here we modify at the beginning some options. We already know what the columns and rows do. For the font size, if you start modifying this, you can see that the font size in the back is kind of changing. So this is what this option will do. Then for the icon size, same thing, but it's gonna change the icon. So you can make this smaller so you don't have the test overlapping the icon and same thing, you can decrease the size of the test until you get everything not overlapping with each other. Now this grid gap, what it does is that it establishes the separation between tiles. So the bigger this is, the more separation between tiles you're gonna have. So the way I want it again is three. And then the last option in here is the rounded. So this is gonna establish the roundness of the corners of each tile. So if you have zero, it's gonna be basically chart corners. And as you increase it, it's gonna be more round. I don't want it to be too round, so that's why I have it at five. I don't want it sharp, but I don't want it too round either. Additionally, under the options, you can select the background color. So you can select white here, and that changes your background color. You can do purple, black, or you can even put a background image by putting the URL. 
just find an image that you like, copy the URL to the image, paste it here, and as you can see, change the background already. So in my case, I want to keep it white. I'm gonna remove this URL and select the white option. So click S. So now we have the different tiles created. We have them arranged the way we want them, but now we can customize even further the different colors of each tile. So the way we do that is by going to this gear icon, going under templates. And again, when we added the different devices, we always selected a specific template for that device or basically the different device type. So now we can modify those device types, appearance options here, and they will be reflected on your dashboard. So the first one that I want to do is the switch. So let's go to switch. We have two different states for the switch on and off. So I want to do on and then I want to do the background color. And then I want specific RGB values for this. So I want 91, 189, 236. And that's the color that I want for the towel whenever that light is on. Now for off, we can do the same thing. Select off under background color, choose your specific color. In my case, these are the specific RGB values that I want for this specific case. Okay, the next style type that I want to modify is the test one. So it's just one single state and the color I want is a darker gray. So 220, 220, 220. And that's it. Next one is gonna be the lock. This is gonna have two different states, the lock and the unlock. So for the lock, background color again, I just want the white. So it's the 255. I can actually do this too and I get that white. And then for the unlock, I want for this color to catch my attention. So I want it red. So I'm going to do 255, 0, and 0. And that's for the unlock. See, it remembers lock, white, unlock, red. Now for my fan, this is the next one I want to do. Fan, there are a couple states in here. In the case of my fan, I can only have four states. Off low, medium, or high. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. So for off, I want it white. So it's gonna be that color. For low, I wanted a different color. So these are the specific values. It's 255, 255, and one, which is yellow. Then for medium, I want it like green. So it's going to be 84, 255 and one. I'm sorry, I want it. And then for high, I want a different color, which is 91, 189, 236, which is blue. Click there. So that way we already established the different colors for the different states of the fan. Next one I wanna do, so you can see it is the color bulb. So let's look for color bulb. For off state, I want it to be white. So I just drag it all the way to the white. And then for on, I want it to be blue. So it's gonna be 91, 189. 236. Okay, next template type that we want to modify is the HSM. So again, we have different states in here for whenever my system is on ARM home, 
I want it to be orange. So gonna put that color. For whenever his arm away, I want it to be red. So that's the red. For whenever his arm nine, I want that to be green. So let's put the numbers for the specific green that I want. And then for whenever it is disarm, I want the blue. So let's put the colors for the blue. Okay, next one I want to modify is the dashboard link tile. I want kind of a darker gray for that one. So that's only one state, the default one. So do the specific color you want, in my case, this kind of darker gray. Next device type, contact sensor. So we want a color for whenever it's closed and for whenever it's open. So for open, again, like with the door lock, I want this to catch my attention. So I want red. So I'm gonna put the values for red. And then for close, I just want the white. So we can just drag it to the white area. And that's it. Then the last device type that I want to do is the motion. So let's look for motion for active or inactive. So for active, same thing. I want this to catch my attention. So red for whenever it gets active. And then for inactive, I just want it white, so put the white one. You can also do custom icons for all of these. So if you want a different icon to appear for whenever it is inactive or active, you can modify that by going into the custom icon and you have a big selection of preset icons that you can choose from. You can see all of those icons. And this is not only for the motion, this is for any device type. So you have that flexibility as well. Well, those are all the customizations that I wanted to do in here. So now let's click on save. You cannot see it because of the portion of the screen being recorded, but there's a button underneath this area that says save. That's what I'm clicking right now. After you click save, you can just exit out of this window. And as you can see, we have all the different changes applied already based on the different colors that we selected. I actually want to change the background color so we can appreciate better this. So let's do a black background. So there you have it. You can see the different customizations that we made. As you can see now, all the test is white and we can barely see what it says because of the colors I selected. So you can change that as well. So let's go back to the gear icon, go back to templates and all the different devices that we modify, we can go back to them. And then instead of changing the background color, we can change this first option for color, which is basically the icon color and select black. for both cases. So you can see initially it was white. So let's select black for that one as well. Let's go through the different ones that we modify to add everything to black. So that's what I'm gonna be doing now. Okay, so I'm done changing the icon color to black. So now we can appreciate better what each of those tiles say. The only one that I didn't change and 
I'm sorry that you cannot see it completely, is the temperature one because we didn't modify that specific tile, but you already know how to modify, so you can go ahead and customize it whichever way you like it better. So just to show you how this is gonna change now, so if I turn on this living room light, I click on it, whenever it turns on, see? Now it is blue, like we selected. If I turn it off, it's gonna go back to white. Same thing with the fan, it's off right now, but we can click on it and select one of the different options. So if we click low, it's gonna turn yellow. If we click it again and select medium, it's gonna turn green. And then if we click it again and we go all the way to high, it's gonna turn it blue, which are the three colors that we selected. And we can go back to off, and it's gonna go back to white whenever the fan finishes fully turning off. Same with the contact sensor, whenever we open this specific contact sensor, I don't have it right here, but whenever this contact sensor gets open, then you're gonna see that that tile turns red. Same thing with this door lock. If you click it, it's gonna ask you if you're sure that you want to change the state. If you click yes, it's gonna send the command. It is unlocked now, so now that that lock is open, it's gonna turn red, and if you click it again, it's gonna ask you again, you select yes, and it's gonna lock it and it's gonna go back to the default color. Same thing with the color bulb. When you click it, this is a color bulb, so it's not only on and off, you can also adjust the brightness level, the color temperature, and the different color for that light bulb. So for turning it on, you can just go here, click that, it's gonna turn it on. See, so since it turned on, now it's blue. And we can adjust the color here. So if we adjust the color here, it will actually change that circle background color is gonna change it to whichever color you select for this color bulb. If you turn it off again, it's gonna turn it back white. For this motion sensor, again, while it is inactive, it's gonna be shown as white, but whenever it gets active again, it's gonna be red. So this is the basic way that you can customize your dashboard. Whenever you're done with it, you might want to go to this gear icon, go to this options section, and then you want to hide those three menu buttons. In my case, I don't like to see them there, but if you like to have that, there's no problem to having that. In my case, I don't want that, so I enable this option for hiding those three dot menu on all tiles. The other thing you can do is to hide the tile template name. So if you don't wanna know the specific type of that tile, you can just click here and just you can see it basically takes out the template name for that tile. So in my case, I don't want that either. And then this hide icon helper test is basically to help you know the state of that one. So in my case, I do like to have that besides the different icon and color. I also want the test saying either off, on, whichever the state could be. If we enable these many buttons here, for each individual tile, you can also do a custom icon here. So if you select here, these are all the options you have, so you don't necessarily need to go through the template area. You can also find it here. And besides a custom icon, you can actually have a background image for that specific tile. So if I do the same background image that I had selected earlier for the background, now it's gonna put that background image, it's gonna use that image as the background of that specific tile. So now you can go tile by tile and maybe put a different background image, different URL, and you can have an even more customized dashboard to your liking. So in my case, I want to take that out. You just take it out by removing the URL. And that's it. This is the basic way to creating this dashboard. Again, like I mentioned earlier, you can have multiple dashboards and you can navigate the different dashboards by having this dashboard link. So if I click on it, 
it's going to take me to that different dashboard. This is the other dashboard I have. So you can see here, this contact sensor is open. So it shows up as red. And the good thing about this one too, since these are battery devices, you can also see the battery percentage left for all of those sensors. I also have separately a battery dashboard because I want to monitor the battery of all my battery devices. So you can do that as well. So let's navigate to that one. And here you can see the different devices that you have different batteries. So whenever the battery is above like 50%, it's going to be green. And then when it goes below the 50% threshold, it's going to turn to red or any other color. That's pretty much it. If you like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, share with everyone. I'm going to keep making content like this. In a future video, I'm going to show how you can even do like advanced modifications of the dashboard so you can have this better looking one where I change this header color here, where I change this test color, where I change this test shadow. The default one is black, but you can actually get rid of it or you can put it white. So stay tuned. I'm going to be making another dashboard tutorial to show you how you can access these advanced features. So thank you for watching. See you next time.